We'll look at uh, the text uh, specifically focusing on Mark chapter 10, verse 29, uh, 28 and uh, through 31, 28 through 31. And this is the passage where Peter says, um, see, we have left everything and followed you. And then Jesus responds, truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel will not receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution and in the age to come eternal life. Many who are first will be last and the last first. Brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, we are all busy trying to find life. Society is all about creating life. And every society thinks it's finding life in different ways, and there's a lot of time, a lot of energy uh, poured into building life. The Old Testament Israelites were at a unique advantage because they not only had um, this land that God had given to them, but they had the words of God on how to build life. And so for many years, hundreds of years, they had been busy building a society, creating a place where humans can flourish. And in our reading in the context, we're introduced to a rich young man who has been trying very hard to build this life. And he seems to have been successful. He's wealthy. He seems to be fairly moral. And now he's going to Jesus Christ and he's asking him, what must I do to inherit eternal life? And the story of Jesus Christ is one of this sharp contrast where you have the people of Israel using the words of God, trying to build a society of life, but constantly falling short, just not quite getting there, or falling into deep rebellion and then a rejection against God. And then the person of Jesus Christ saying to the Israelites first and then to the entire world, follow me. Give up everything that you've been doing here and follow me. Jesus Christ calls people to follow Him in order to find life. And so the rich young ruler is given this choice, give up on everything that he's been working on and follow Jesus Christ as the way of life, or continue to go back and try harder. Jesus makes clear to follow Him is this rejection of everything else you've tried. You can't decide that I'm going to follow money and and use money to, to grow my life and follow Jesus Christ. No, you can't serve two masters. You can't have two bosses telling you this is how you make your decisions. It's one or the other. And the rich young ruler decides not to follow Jesus Christ. But some of the other disciples have. They've given up a lot. And as they realize what they've been giving up, there is inevitably this question, is it worth it? It's a question I want to focus on uh, this morning as well. Because by doing profession of faith, by being baptized into Jesus Christ, you are saying no to anything the world offers. And you're saying, my one hope for life is Christ. Well, here's what Jesus says to you. Life is far richer, and we can even make it much stronger. There is life only with Jesus Christ in the gospel. Life is far richer. There's life only with Jesus Christ and the gospel. But that doesn't mean, as we look at our first point, that there's not a sense of loss. Peter says to Jesus, see, we have left everything and followed you. And Jesus understands that there is this leaving 
that comes with loss. He doesn't ignore it. He recognizes that there is something that you are leaving behind when you follow him. And you see that Jesus is aware of this because he says, no one who has left. So he understands there's a leaving taking place, left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel. So Jesus Christ knows that as he calls you to follow him, that you are leaving something. And what are you leaving? Well, uh, there are different categories in uh, Jesus' statement. There's this loss of home. The Israelites had their plot of land given to them by God that they called home. Following Jesus Christ meant the disciples became sojourners, homeless. Christ followers are, in a sense, homeless wanderers, hobos. Something the Bible uh, teaches not just to the disciples, but also to you and to, uh, to uh, me, that to follow Jesus Christ is to recognize you can never hold tightly to any one house, one city, or one country. Because Jesus might lead you elsewhere. You might take a person from Iran to Italy to Richmond Hill and maybe even someday elsewhere. So there's this loss of home. You can no longer say, this place is my home. Why? Because your home now is with Jesus. Wherever he goes, you will go. There's a loss of home. There's also a loss of family. So whereas before the disciples, uh, they lived at home, uh, they went about their daily work, um, fishing and so, they might even go home and they feast with uh, the family at family gatherings. Now, they leave all of that behind, following Jesus Christ wherever He went. The Bible makes clear that for Christians uh, today, uh, beginning to follow Jesus Christ is often creates a divide in family. Maybe family members, brothers, sisters, fathers, mothers that don't understand. Some places in the world, they may even disown you, may even turn you in, imprison you. So to follow Jesus Christ is to say, I love my family, but my life is not my family. My life is not with my family. There's only one place where I can find life, and that is in following Jesus Christ. And even if that means I lose my family, and it may happen at times, life is with Jesus Christ. So there's a sense of loss of home, of family. There's even a sense of loss of inheritance. And so Jesus talks there about one doesn't lose fields or lands. Land ownership in Israel was incredibly important. Why? Because this was your place for the future. If you had a piece of land, you felt settled. You felt that not only in the present you were safe, but you had a future with God. But the Bible makes clear that for the disciples... There's no hope in having this plot of land if they don't know Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ says, follow me. For you and I today to follow Jesus Christ is a recognition that this world and the inheritances promised in this world aren't for us. It's not what we're looking for. It's not what we're working for. There's a loss of home, there's a loss of family, there's a loss of inheritance. As you see the world and all that is in it and you turn away from it and you begin to follow Jesus Christ and say, this is where life is found. And there's even a loss of societal respect. Because it sounds crazy. It seems crazy. That everything 
everything the Israelites have worked so hard for, everything people are so busy with, that you would say, none of that ultimately is going to give me life, eternal life, fullness of life. The only place I'm going to find it is in Jesus Christ, a man crucified on a cross. And then I will follow him wherever he goes. There's a loss of respect. Jesus' own family, they looked at Jesus Christ at one time and they said he's crazy. Just a few chapters earlier in the Gospel of Mark, um, Jesus' family heard about what was happening. They went out to seize him. They actually went out to grab Jesus to take him home because they said he's out of his mind. Like, how can you be so crazy as to do what you are doing? Now, imagine if that's the leader. And then you have the disciples following what many people think are a crazy man. The Bible makes clear that for Christians, followers of Jesus Christ today, you will be scorned. In secular Canada, many think it's foolish to follow Jesus Christ, especially when you see the wealth, prosperity that we have here in Canada. Who needs Christ? Often when people find out that you are a Christian, that you faithfully attend church, they try to figure out why. Like, this doesn't make sense to me. It seems crazy. Why might you be doing what you're doing? Tell me a little bit more. Did you grow up that way? Oh, your parents made you do it. Uh, That makes sense. You don't have your own mind. Did your friends try to convince you? Uh, Okay, maybe you like friendship and that's what you're really enjoying in church. There's this sense of loss of societal respect as people look at you and say, why would you do that? I've actually had this as as a pastor. If I share with people that I'm a Christian pastor, I can often see in their mind, you couldn't get a real career, could you? You need to dupe people in religion so you can get some money. And then we invite them over to our house and they see the big mans and they're like, oh, yeah, that's why you're a pastor. And then as you begin to talk with them and you begin to share the gospel with them and they begin to see in your heart and in your mind that this is what you believe and that you live this, there's this confusion. Maybe a loss of respect. Why? Because what you profess today is something that cannot be understood by the earthly mind, by a mind that is closed off to the spiritual things of God, that does not acknowledge God, does not submit to God, does not, uh, is not guided by the Spirit of God. It cannot comprehend it. It only thinks it's foolishness. And yet, there are people who profess it. And that's remarkable, and that's where, along with the disciples, we might say, well, who would ever do that? And Jesus says, with man it seems impossible, but not with God. It is God who works within our hearts, opens our eyes to see that following Jesus Christ is life. But it does come with a sense of earthly loss. On that day when you face death, it's not going to matter how rich you were. It's not going to matter how many siblings, how many kids, how many grandkids you had. To follow Jesus Christ is to say, this is not where I find my hope. This is not where I find my life. I find my life in Christ and in Christ alone. And it is a struggle. It's, a, it's fighting the good fight of faith. Young men and women uh, often wrestle with this. Hey, profession of faith, what does that really, truly mean? What does that mean for the career that I want? What does that mean for the house that I want? What does that mean for the property that I'm looking for? What does that mean for my vision for my own life? What does that mean for my career? 
Some might even think, if I profess faith, do I really have to believe it and live it? And yet there are people that do. Praise God. So there's this deep sense of earthly loss. And as I look around in our congregation, you've all felt it in one way or another. Some in very dramatic ways. In your careers, you might have seen it in your families. You might have experienced it. Others maybe not as in such dramatic ways. But I do know there are people that have lost a great deal. And Jesus speaks to all of us. And he says, truly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the gospel who will not receive a hundredfold. And we read that and we think, yes, of course, the eternal life, that's what we are looking for. But then there's a remarkable statement, now in this time. That's the second point. Not only is there a sense of loss, but there is a sense of immediate reward. And this sense of immediate reward, Jesus begins by saying, truly I say to you, here is something you can count on. This you can take to the bank. Amen, I tell you. There is immediate reward. Well, what is that immediate reward? that Jesus talks about in this time, in this present age. He says, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions. Well, let's just uh, spend a a short little time understanding this. Because it's very clear that as you work through this, it's not physical that Jesus promises, but it is. There's a a new way of seeing things, a new way of understanding things, and the reward that you receive, ours, homes, houses. What does that mean? Well, as you read the gospel stories and as you see the church of Jesus Christ, the followers of Jesus Christ being established, you begin to see that wherever Christ is present, you have a spiritual home. Wherever Christ is present, you have a spiritual home. I spoke to someone recently who had moved often in life, and rather than always feeling unsettled, they said, I could always feel at home. Why? Because there was a good church. Psalm 84, a sparrow finds a home to rest, a swallow deftly builds her nest. We have a home in the presence of God. And wherever you go as a follower of Jesus Christ, you can find a home because there's a faithful church. It's a remarkable experience. I had this recently in going to Korea. Completely different culture, completely different language, completely different experience, and yet I felt at home. Why? Because at Dream Church, Christ was present. What does this mean as you think about your life? As you think about where you go, where you go to college, where you might move? That of first importance is asking yourself, is there a faithful church? That's what it means to follow Jesus Christ. Not to let career influence your move decisions, not to let family influence your move decisions, not let earthly homes influence your move decisions, but let Christ influence your move decisions. If you're considering college, ask yourself, before you even look at how good this college or university is, ask yourself, is there a faithful local church that I can belong to? If you're considering a move, your job is offering you a a career posting elsewhere, ask first of all, is there a faithful church of Jesus Christ? 
So there's immediate reward, reward of spiritual homes across the world, the reward of spiritual family across the world. By faith in Jesus Christ, you are adopted in the family of God. And Jesus says, who will not receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children. Notice it's missing fathers in this passage. Why? Because we have one father, Jesus, God the Father in heaven. He's the one who has adopted us into the family of God. And by faith in him, we have brothers and sisters more than we can ever imagine. Jesus made that clear. As his parents were trying to take his crazy away, he said to them, who's my mother? Who's my brothers? Who's my sisters? Here are my mothers and brothers and sisters. Whoever does the will of God. Yes, there might be a sense of family loss, but you gain a spiritual family that becomes far closer to you than any family that does not know Jesus Christ can. We are the family of God, brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. With spiritual mothers, I have the privilege of visiting spiritual mothers that encourage me. And children, little brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. And it's not just here at Bethel, but you can go to a faithful church of Jesus Christ and you can recognize, here's my family. Here are my brothers. Here are my sisters. Here are the children of God that are part of our family as well. So there is a sense of immediate reward. And finally, also just a reward of inheritance. As you look around the world and you, you see that there doesn't seem to be any place that belongs to me, Jesus Christ reminds you, blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Why? Because Jesus Christ says, all authority in heaven and earth has been given to me. You can go anywhere in this world and you can recognize this belongs to my brother. This is our family land. You walk around Canada, this is our family land. Why? Because Jesus Christ owns it. Might not look like it, he's patient and he's gracious with the people that are trying to occupy it and trying to do with it what they want, but no, this is our family land. You can go to North Korea, and the dictator there might think, well, no, 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 this is my land. And you can walk around and you can say, no, I know who owns this? He's my eldest brother, Jesus. This is our family land. China is Christ. The Middle East is Christ. Iran, Gaza, Israel, and all of that fighting that's going on, that's our family land. That belongs to Jesus Christ. And so part of the privilege of belonging to Jesus Christ and following Jesus Christ is you begin to see that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And so then the question is, well, if this is our family land, how do we deal with those who are living in there? Well, follow the ways of Jesus Christ. He teaches you and me how to deal with those who live in our family land, how to love them how to warn them, how to be gracious to them, how to encourage them. And that's where Jesus reminds there's immediate reward. You receive a hundredfold with persecutions. It's an odd immediate reward, persecutions. Your profession of faith is a painful reminder to the unbeliever of their destiny apart from God that as hard as they're working, they still have nothing to show for it eternally. That's a testimony of uh, the follower of Jesus Christ, that no matter how hard you work, no matter how much money you have and the land you have conquered, you're going to die. You're going to face the judgment of God. There's one way of salvation. Believe in Jesus Christ and you will be saved. And the world will not want to hear that, and there will be persecution that comes upon you for that. But as a child of God, you know 
You know you have brothers and sisters around the world praying and supporting. You know you have your eldest brother in heaven watching over you. So there's a sense of loss, but there's also an immediate reward that you can embrace already right now by faith in Jesus Christ. And then finally, there's a reward in the age to come. Because Jesus says, we'll not receive a hundredfold both now and in the age to come eternal life. When you come to faith in Jesus Christ, there's no heavenly loss. You don't lose anything. The only thing that you lose um, in the spiritual realm is you lose a sense of shame over sin. Why? Because Jesus Christ suffered at the cross. You lose a sense of guilt. You lose a sense of condemnation, of hopelessness, of darkness. All of a sudden, all of that heavy baggage that you've been carrying around as you've trying to been, been trying to build life, by faith in Jesus Christ, you lose that heavy baggage. But there is an immediate reward, a richness that comes with it. Eternal life. Life, not death, life. And that word life, if you understand it in biblical context, it has nothing to do with anything that surrounds death, disease, dying, despair, tears, fears of death, aging, all of the things that either rob us of life or make us worry that we're not going to have life. Like a a life, but not just life as in my heart is beating, a life as in a fullness of life where there is no sorrow, no suffering, no pain. That's what we're working so hard to find, but it always seems so far out of reach. And then Jesus Christ says, follow me and you have eternal life. You have life and that life is eternal. And that eternal is not just related to endless time that seems to go on and on forever, but rather a glorious, timeless existence where you can know this fullness of life that Jesus gives just continues to be filled and to continues to grow, and there's no end to it. Anything that is true, that's honorable, that's right, that's pure, that's lovely is yours in full measure. You don't have to ever live life by faith in Jesus Christ with FOMO, which if you don't know what FOMO is, it's a fear of missing out. FOMO, it's that greatest danger to following Jesus Christ. There's this FOMO that what's going to happen if I follow Jesus Christ? Am I going to miss out on the family? Am I going to miss out on uh, prosperity? Am I going to miss out on all the vacations I want to do? Am I going to miss out... Jesus says, look, you don't have to have FOMO because you have eternal life. And everything that you think you might want right now, you will receive a hundredfold more. As Peter says, see, we've left everything and followed you. You can almost see him standing there and saying, like, we've left everything. What's, what is, is this good? And Jesus responds and says, it's far more than good. There's a hundredfold more. You'll begin to see a fullness of life that you never dared imagine. Brothers and sisters, Let these words encourage you that by faith in Jesus Christ, there is fullness of life. Yes, there's a sense of loss, but Jesus says that loss is nothing compared to the richness of forsaking everything for my sake and for the gospel. May you not only believe it, but may each of us begin to experience it. In Christ's name, amen.